Yo, what is going on, peasants? JB back here today with yet another tier list. And today we're going to be ranking every Pokemon in the game post Guja release. And uh, we have some hot takes. We have some interesting takes. So be sure to be uh, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Do all that sort of YouTuber nonsense. And before we get into that, though, let's go ahead and quickly go over our tiers. We have our God Dog tier. We we don't we did this last time. You guys know what's going on up there. We have our Silly Goose tier, which is our S tier. We have Astonishing, which is your A tier. We have the Yes tier, which is like your A minus B plus range. We have Thanos, which is perfectly balanced as all things could be, should be rather. Uh, so it's like our B tier slash our middle of the road slash this Pokemon's fine, doesn't really need any changes. We have the Can You Not tier, the Pokemon that are just slightly underperforming. And then we have the Don't slash Need Buffs tier. These are the characters that I think are most in need of a buff, not necessarily bad and not necessarily saying that you can't win and do well with these Pokemon. It's just Pokemon that I think could use a little bit of love in the next balance patch. Balance patch. Balance patch? Words are hard. Either way, let's go ahead and get this show on the road. I'm going to be referencing my previous tier list, which was post Zacian release uh, on the other screen. So let's go ahead and start talking. Let's go. Let's start off with all around her. So Aegislash, Aegislash I had in the B tier, uh, in the Thanos tier last time around. And I think that feels about right. Honestly, Aegislash is borderline in need of some love, but I think the character is still really good. I think the problem with Aegislash and the problem with everything in this game right now is that there's just too much stuns too many stuns too much crowd control literally it feels like every single character i'm just gonna quickly go through characters and tell you whether or not they have stuns gudra yes absolutely yes a little bit nine tails obviously azumarill a little bit on its united move blastoise a ton blissey yes buzzwool yes charizard yes cinderace yes clef yes comfy yes cram not really uh, a little bit uh hurricane uh crystal yes the sigui yes bell fox uh, it has slows, same sort of thing. Dodrio, yes. Dragapult, sort of. Dragonite, yes. Duraludon, Stealth Rock, but it's the worst move in the game. Eldegoss, sort of. Espeon, yes. Garchomp, yes. Cardinal, yes. Gengar, yes. Glaceon, Freeze Dry, not really. Greedent, a little bit, sort of. I mean, Belch, Unite move a little bit. Greninja, no. Not any stuns on Greninja, actually. Good job, Greninja. Hoopa, yes. Lucario, eh, a little bit. Machamp, yes. Famous one, yes, Mew, yes, mine, Pikachu, Sableye, Scizor, uh, with its Unite move a little bit, Scyther, no stuns, good job, Scyther, Slowbro, yes, Thorlax, yes, Sylveon, no, Talonflame, Unite move, so, kind of, Trevenant, a ton, yes, yes, um, I, I, Dark Bear, yes, Water Bear, Unite move, but it's the worst in the game, Boosted Auto, Slash Sludge Bomb, so, not really, but sort of. Really tough. Uh, that's what the character is. Uh, Zeraora has a little bit of CC. Zoroark, I don't think does. So good job. Zacian has a ton. So yeah, that, that, just to quickly go over. Does it stun? Yeah, most of the roster can stun. We really need to remove a lot of stuns from this game. And that will help a lot of characters. But specifically talking about Aegislash, that's kind of the only problem with it. And it's going to be a problem with a lot of other characters in the game. Is that there are two goddamn many stuns. Um, so... Yeah, it is what it is. Um, Azumarill, we're going to go uh, A minus B plus is where I had it last time. I think that's fair. Uh, it performs really well early, and it's pretty solid all throughout the game. It does fall off a little bit late game, but it's it's a fairly good Pokemon overall. Uh, Buzzwell, I'm going to move it down to the Thanos tier. I think the character, it, it has its moments where it's very, very good. I think Leech Life is incredibly strong, but I mean, it's like the one CC this character has, but it, it, anything and everything can knock it out. Like if every stun, every CC move in the game acted like leech life where even your own teammates could knock you out of it like that would be good like i could live with that sort of level of crowd control in the game but no that's not what we're here to talk about but i i, I do think buzzle falls off hard like it has one of the best early games in all of united it's level like it's laning phase up until first uh reggie is phenomenal the problem is it's mid game is kind of well mid and it's late game is pretty bad it has a not so great unite move again that's not to say this character isn't good like it's in the b tier it's in like yeah i don't think this character needs any changes but there are just some characters that outperform it uh charizard is not one of those characters i think charizard is a bottom two to three character in the entire game right now um they completely ruined this pokemon when they nerfed uh it's unite move they got rid of its true damage uh they also got rid of uh i think some other damage on um fire flamethrower fire blast they nerfed one of them i'm pretty sure either way the character is just uh incredibly incredibly underwhelming at the moment Next up, we have, is it Dragonite next? All around her, all around her, all around her, all around her. Yeah, Dragonite's next. I think I'm willing to give Dragonite... Mm, 
I'll give it the bump up to A minus B plus. Now, if you know me and you've been around the channel for a while, you know I am a notorious. I am probably the biggest outrage hater on the entire internet, aside from maybe Chris, heroes. Um, I think Outrage Dragonite is one of the worst builds in the entire game. However, it's actually not bad. The damage buff on it was actually pretty significant. So it's not totally throwing. I just think a Hyper Beam is probably still the play. And um, there are a million other all-arounders that play that sort of Broly play style that uh, Dragonite is really good at that don't stun themselves. So, yeah. Um, and people are talking about this as a sort of a Zacy encounter. I, I don't know what planet you're living on. I don't know how that's a thing, but... If you think this counters AC and you have success doing it, go for it. I think that's... I, I don't understand that at all, but whatever. I'm not smart, so... Maybe that'll come out and uh, I'll, I'll figure that out eventually and I'll be wrong about it, but I think that is major, major copium. Um, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> Moving on, let's go ahead and talk about uh, Chompy Boy. I think Chompy Boy is still in the stage minus B plus range. As a very strong early game, it's mid game is pretty bad, but a high level Garchomp is one of the scariest things in the world. So that's pretty cool. Again, the problem with Garchomp, like so many other characters, is just the uh, absurd amount of stuns and the absurd amount of crowd control in the game. It really doesn't like playing a lot of stuff. It really doesn't like playing us a lot of that stuff. And also, um, it, it, it hardcore loses to the dog. So yeah, yeah, it is what it is in that regard. Um, next up is going to be Lucario, I think. Lucario, Lucario is borderline A tier for me. I had an A tier last patch, but I don't know. It just feels like Lucario could use a little bit of something. I don't think I don't think Lucario is bad. It's not bad by any means. It's still like an above average Pokemon. It is. I think it suffers from isn't uh, Urshifu or Zacian syndrome. I think that's pretty much what it boils down to for Luke. Unfortunately, it's a really solid, very strong Pokemon, but I don't know. It just suffers from mildly mid at the moment so yeah that's where we're gonna go with lucario and uh i think we're just gonna continue the run on a minus b plus tier with machamp because machamp um I, I had it in thanos last time i'm gonna bump it up because i think it is just uh very strong i think the um dynamic punch cross shot build is actually phenomenal it still has one of the best unite moves in the game so i do think that machamp has a lot going for it the problem that machamp has is you need to create your cross shops to actually do damage uh, because if you don't crit, then you're kind of just not doing anything. But I, I do think Machamp is performing very well, has an amazing early game. And unlike a lot of other all arounders that we've talked about, um, you know, specifically Aegislash, um, Buzzwall, Garchomp, it's mid game doesn't struggle. I think Machoke is actually very, very good. Like you get both of your abilities before you evolve. So that's uh, great. So you're, you're actually able to do stuff as a Machoke. So you're not totally useless to your team until you're fully evolved, unlike Garchomp. So uh, yeah, I think Machoke, uh, Machamp is just in a really solid place right now. We'll put it in the A minus B plus range. And then. Next up, next up is going to be all Scizor. Yeah, Scizor. I, I think I'm also... Mm, it's honestly a little bit underwhelming to me. I had it in uh, Yes last time around, but I think I might bump it down to Thanos. And also, if it wasn't clear, I'm not going to be ranking them against each other within the tiers. That would just take way too long. Uh, so I'm not necessarily saying that Azumarill is better than Machamp. I think Machamp is the best Pokemon in that tier right now. But um, I'm debating... I think I'm going to knock Scizor down to the B range. Um, it's just, I don't think it's quite performing as well as some of these other Pokemon. It does still have really good sustain, but it feels like its damage fell off a little bit. When they nerfed Scyther's, uh, Swords Dance, it feels like they really hurt Scizor's as well. Uh, you can run double hit, you can get away with it, but it's kind of whatever. And it's United Move is just nowhere near as good as Scyther's. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and leave our boy in the, uh, Thanos tier. Which is still a fine place for it to be. I think it's just, you know, it's a border, it's like a baseline good. Everything about it is good, there's not really anything bad about it, so leave it there. Uh, next up. Next up is going to be Serena. Yeah, Serena. We're going we're gonna, to gonna talk about Scyther with the uh, speedsters because let's be real, that's what Scyther is. Uh, so Serena. Mm, Serena is a tough one for me because I think the character is kind of bad right now, but in the right matchups, if you manage to get, you know, the golden goose of a game with um, no Trevenant, no Zacian, you can still have a lot of fun. If you manage to get like the uh season nine solo queue team of a bunch of squishies serena can still dominate the problem is there aren't a lot of those teams running around right now so for serena mm, it kind of feels like a can you not but the character itself is still really strong it's still really strong it's just very matchup dependent and i think based on the current pet meta and the current patch i'm gonna bump it down to can you not as much as i love serena serena is 
I think probably better than most of these other characters. It's just, it's so matchup dependent. And if you run into bulkier things, you're just not going to do anything. They really hurt this character's survivability um, when they nerfed his defenses. So I, it, it feels a little bit harsh giving Zarina uh, C tier because you can carry harder with Zarina than a lot of these other characters. But just based on what's popular right now, I don't think Serena is really performing all that well against a lot of it. Uh, speaking of, Tyranitar is phenomenal. I'm putting it in the S tier. It's going to be our first S tier of the video. Um, I think uh, Tyranitar is super good. Um, it's kind of the opposite of a lot of these good early bad late characters, and it's pretty bad early. I do think Larvitar is actually pretty good. I think Pupitar is where this character gets really, really bad. So the, from, the, from the moment you evolve into Pupitar until you evolve into Tyranitar, you're pretty much useless. But Tyranitar, as we all know, is probably, aside from Zacian, the best late game Pokemon in the entire game. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, just doing so much damage, having so much survivability, and honestly, it's kind of needed. I think Tyranitar is the closest thing to competing to Zacian in the game right now. As weird as that sounds, it just has the survivability and the raw damage output to be able to not really, um, you know, check it, keep it in check, but it's the closest thing we have right now. I think Tyranitar is a phenomenal Pokemon, so I'll give it the uh, S tier. And now, next up, we have Urshifu's um we're gonna go ahead and put both water and dark bear back in esther i had them both in esther last time as well and nothing's really changed it's just you know they're they're still very very good uh dark bear still has the best secure in the game um water bear still has the best level five in the entire game um water bear is such a phenomenal pokemon early game so uh i think it's still one of the better junglers in the game dark bear like i said great uh laner great stacker great just all around you know secure of objectives as well uh, so yeah, both very good Pokemon, still both worthy of S tier in my mind. And then last and certainly not least for all arounders, um, we don't need to talk about it. This Pokemon needs to be removed from the game. It doesn't need to be nerfed. It needs to be straight up removed. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I've never been, I've never been more frustrated playing Unite than when I'm going up against this character. It's really disgusting and something needs to be done about it. I, I don't know what they do about it. They need like, it's, it's not just one part of its kit. Um, obviously, we have the Metal Claw and the um, Play Rough build, whatever. No one runs that for a reason. Because every single thing, like, I'm not kidding when I say this. Every single bit, piece, every word, everything about Sacred Sword and Agility is broken. Every single thing. Every single thing about its uh, passive with the Aos Energy is broken. It's Unite Move. Broken. We don't really need to spend too much time on this. Every single part of Zacian's kit needs to be cut not only in half, it needs to be cut, it needs to be cut by like 95%, and then maybe this Pokemon will be in line. Like, it has the same stats at level, what? what is it, level 1? As a level 7 Greninja? It is, I'm not sure if it's level 1 or like level 3 or whatever, but like, it's 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 too strong. It's too strong. It is, we, we don't, I'm, I'm, I'm done spending time on it. Zacian needs to be removed from the game entirely. Um, And I, I don't care. It, it, it needs to go, it needs to go. All right, let's go ahead and talk about some supporters. Um, Blissey. Blissey is borderline S tier for me. I'm going to put Blissey in A for a simple reason. That being that it doesn't really survive as well in death wall comps as it used to. And that is because Clefable exists. And that is the only reason I'm knocking Blissey down a tier. Blissey is still phenomenal. It's a fantastic healer. That's probably the best or second best uh, support Unite move in the entire game. It's absolutely ridiculous. Love Blissey a lot, but the thing that Clefable provides that Blissey just can't, it can heal multiple targets at once, and that is so huge for, you know, just a lot of, you know, characters in the game. Gravity is one of the few tools that we have that can combat a lot of, you know, these things, this thing. Like, gravity is necessary in this game. As much as I hate playing against gravity, can you imagine this game without it right now? Like, we need gravity in the game. Um, so, yeah. Clef is, uh, I think, probably the second best support in the game. So, yeah, Clef is incredible. Um, next up, we have Kunfei. All they had to do with Kunfei was um, just slightly buff its healing or buff its flowers a little bit so you regenerate them faster. That is all they had to do to buff Kunfei, and it would have been good because it was like, was it horrible on release? Yeah. Were we all worried about it being incredibly crazy after, two, uh, you know, one buff? Yeah, we were and we were all right about that we i said in my comfy tier list all it's going to take is this pokemon to get one you know sizable buff and it was going to be broken so not only did they buff you know just one thing about it, they buffed every single part of its kit and they made the most demonic thing ever 
legitimately all they had to do was make its flowers regen faster or or just simply raise the healing that is all they had to do and comfy would have been fine would have probably still been in like the a minus to a range potentially even s tier but no instead they buffed literally every single part of the kit and they completely broke the pokemon and completely broke the game why the fuck does magic leaf stun why why does this character need a stun i think the only characters that should have stuns are ranged mages and defenders those are the only characters that should have stuns maybe like maybe a little bit of a stun like maybe magic leaf stuns you know like I'm, I'm cool with you know a character like mr mime having a stun but mr mime plays more of a defender role i'm cool with like gravity existing because it's an aoe effect you can catch them with it that's a skill to use magic leaf doesn't you don't have to aim it you literally don't aim it you just press the button and it stuns like wh why does that move stun <laughs> like i get you know a character like pikachu built around stunning why i get sableye that makes a little bit of sense like they, that's the character's design it doesn't really fit the supporter role it doesn't really fit the defender role it doesn't really fit the speedster role it doesn't really have a real role but i get that that's what the character is designed to do that's fine why does a pure supporter have a stun that you don't have to aim doesn't make any sense it makes zero sense like at least you know I, i'm going on another tangent about stuns sorry but like espion skill shot Moon Blast, skill shot. Pikachu, uh, Volt Tackle, skill shot. Pikachu, Thunderbolt, skill shot. Well, uh, uh, Volt Tackle isn't really a skill shot, but it puts you in danger. Um, really tough. Defender, defender. Like, you have to put yourself in front, in, you know, in the line of fire to land these stuns. That's fine. That makes sense. Nine tells ranged mage, built around freezing. Makes sense that that stuns. Why does Gunfei have a stun? And probably the best stun in the game, because you don't have to aim. Why, why, why is that a thing? I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Stuns need to be... That, that is the biggest problem in the game right now. Used to be X speed, now it stuns. <laughs> oh, people are people are weirded out by me, I know. All right. Eldegoss. LD, LD, LD. Uh, it's between A minus and A for me. It's between yes and astonishing. It's somewhere in that range. I don't I don't think it's quite on par with Blissey, but I don't think it's bad either. I'm gonna I'm gonna give Eldegoss A. So because it still has a really good ult. Has great healing with uh, Pollen Puff as well as Count Guard. Has, you know, decent, uh, a little bit of, you know, like, Cotton Sport. It's a CC that makes sense. It's an AoE that stuns at the end of the move. Like, and it's just a little knock-up. Not a, you're locked, can't move, can't play the game sort of thing. Like, I don't know. I think Autogoss is fine. It's an attacker hybrid. Like, it's auto attacks slow a little bit. That's acceptable CC. Like, I don't know, man. Uh, I'm gonna stop rambling about crowd control. I'm gonna try to anyway, but yeah, I think I think Eldegoss is pretty fine right now. Uh, Hoopa, 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 Hoopa is a tough one. I think it's very good. It feels like it's a little bit of a step below LD and Blissey, but it's really not. I'll give Hoopa A. I'll give Hoopa A. I think just the whole buff from a while back is still very good, very strong. So I'm willing to keep it in A tier and next up we have mr mime i do think mr mime is finally in a place where it's still really 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 good but not game breaking so it's a very good unite move which again it's a unite move makes sense that, that stuns confusion makes sense that it stuns because it's a defender um yeah i think mime is finally a good place power swap finally feels like it's not broken it also honestly feels a little bit underwhelming right now which is perfectly fine that's where we need power swap to be after what it's been uh, i think power swap is fine i think barrier is actually in a really good place right now something like barrier makes a lot of sense so yeah i think mime is a good character but not exactly broken and then last up for support is we have wiggly i'm gonna give wiggly thanos it's very usable the problem with wiggly tough is it's it's simply not a support character in any way shape or form aside from its unite move and its unite move is really just an aoe buddy barrier I, I generally think that it wouldn't be a horrible idea for the devs to change Wigglytuff's role to a defender and maybe give it a little bit more defenses. I think that could be a really fun buff for Wigglytuff and actually make it playable. Potentially give it a little bit more, like, just make its auto attacks a little bit stronger, give it a little bit more bulk, and call it a defender. Like, I'm cool with it. Makes sense to me. Maybe re maybe rework seeing a little bit. I don't really think you need to do that. I think Rolla is, would be fine for a defender build. Like, I, I think, you know, it, it would generally be a pretty good idea to just change Wigglytuff's role to a defender. I, I, let me know what you think about that um, in the comments down yonder. I think that's a good idea. I think it's a pretty good idea. All right. 
So we did all rounders and attackers. Let's knock out speedsters real quick because they'll be pretty darn easy. There's only a few of them in the game and only a few good ones that we really need to talk about. I think Absol is actually pretty solid right now. Does a ton of burst damage. Still really strong in lane. Um, it's good late game if you can catch a carry. Other than that, you're just kind of existing throughout a good portion of the match. But you, know, you, you find a target, you take out the target. It's actually pretty good. So I'm a big fan of the boy Absol. I think it's in a pretty solid spot. Dodrio, I still think Dodrio is uh, an S tier Pokemon. I think it's phenomenal. Does a lot of damage, really good early, really good all throughout the game. Has an incredible Unite move, has great sustainability. I think Dodrio is great. Great, great, great Pokemon. Love it. What do we have next? Gengar. I think Gengar is, I had it Thanos last time. I'm going to keep it there. I think Gengar is in a good spot where you can do well with it in certain matchups, but against other matchups, it's going to struggle. And I think that's, you know, I, I do believe that is the definition of balance. Um, it's very strong, very good against squishies. It's not so good against bulkier things. So yeah, I think Gengar's fine. You can still steamroll games with it. You can still carry as hard as ever with it. You just, you know, need to have yourself a good matchup. Alrighty, Scyther. Scyther had S tier last time, and I think it's probably still S tier. It's close. It's close to A. Mm. Now I'm going to give it S tier, and here's why. It was finally unbanned for the tournaments this past weekend and it dominated like in games where scyther wasn't banned it was still as great as ever still has incredible burst damage it's just you know the uh reset bugs are fixed now so you're not getting as easy of resets so that's yeah, still an incredibly strong pokemon still very very good especially in solo duo trio love me some scyther very very good uh talon flame i think is the worst pokemon in the game right now this character needs a lot of love it just does not do a dump damage although i will say and this is because this character is broken, not so much that Talonflame is good. I will say, uh, my buddy Under the Radar and I got absolutely obliterated by a Talonflame comfy duo. That's because we were playing, we uh, had uh, we had Decidueye, um, Greninja, Water Bear, and um, uh, Hoopa, and I think it was a Slowbro. So Slowbro was like the only thing that wasn't getting one shot the talent flame so they would stun boom land everything on our team aside from uh the water bear who was me and the uh slow bear were literally one shot so hey talent flame has its moments it's very good against squishies but other than that horrible character um yeah it's just it's just it's it's simply just not good doesn't do enough damage um fly is annoying but whatever it's unite move is kind of bad like talent Tal flame just bad talent flame talent flame needs a lot of love i think it's the worst character in the game right now um, next up, we have Zara Aura. Now, this is always the hardest one for me to rank because I don't think Zara Aura is bad. I know Zara Aura has a reputation of being down here as one of the worst Pokemon in the game, but I really don't think it's I, I really don't think it's like bottom five. In the, it is like lower on the tier rankings. Don't get me wrong. I think it's probably closer to here if I'm being honest with myself. But I know a lot of people really, really don't like uh, Zero Aura right now. I, I man, I, I don't, I, I'm going to give it C. I'm going to give it C just because I do agree that it does need some tweaks, but I think this character getting five, seven, nine, I've said this a, mil a million times. If you give this character five, seven, nine, it's broken. It's absolutely disgustingly overpowered at that point. Cause I think discharge at level seven is ridiculous. Um, and I think, um, I also think wild charge is still one of the most broken moves in the game. It just, it doesn't, we're not in a squishy meta as we used to be. So yeah, but if we ever go back to a squishy meta, wild charge is going to be super, super, super overpowered, but that's not where we're at right now. And I realize that. So I'm going to give it C tier. I don't think it, I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. I think it's still a really, really good solo queue Pokemon. Um, probably one of the better solo queue Pokemon, honestly, like it's still, you can still carry with this character quite easily. It's just doesn't need a little bit of love. Sure. But it's not as bad as people make it out to be. I really don't think it's one of the worst Pokemon in the game, but I'll give it, I'll give you guys the benefit of the doubt and agree that it does need a little bit of love. And then for our final speedster, it's going to be Zoroark. And where do we want to put our emo fox thing? So the problem with Zoroark that I have is it is incredibly difficult to play, but if you get good at it, it is unbelievable how strong this character can be. So I'm going to put it B tier. That's where I had it last time. And I kind of agree with that placement, honestly, simply because it's like I said, it's very, very good, very powerful, and you can do some incredible things with it. The problem is it's just really hard to master, really hard to get good with. So 
how high can you put a Pokemon that's really skill intensive versus, you know, the relative value that it provides. I, I don't I don't think it's like, yeah, you could be the best Zorark in the world, but you're you're still not, you know, 1v1ing a Tyranitar or a Zacian consistently anyway you know what i mean like i think i think zorark is fine it's good it's a lot of gengar you can snowball a lot of games with it. you can carry the, the hell out of games with it but it's also a character that could absolutely do nothing so i think b tier is fine let's move on to our attackers next and for a9 i think a9 is also in this just pretty balanced range i think it's pretty solid um does a lot of damage falls off a little bit late game very uh weak to getting dove on believe it or not like this character just explodes to burst damage so yeah it's good you do a lot of damage with it you put out a lot of you know just stuns aoe damage just raw fat damage i don't really have another way of putting it like you're doing a ton it's just uh you're not really killing things you're just pressing a a lot and being annoying <laughs> yeah that's that's kind of where kind of where our boy or dog box thing is all right moving on to cinderace cinderace is a tier right now um cinderace always just is in this weird spot where people don't think it's as good as it is but i promise you cinderace is still incredible does ridiculous damage with its auto attacks blaze kick stuns why does blaze kick stun um it's just a really good adc phenomenal solo queue pokemon process a does a lot of damage cinderace good all right, Comfy. Com or no, not Comfy. Um, Cramorant. I think Cramorant is also borderline A tier, honestly. Yeah, Cramorant is like borderline borderline A tier for me. It's it's A minus B plus. It's 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 in between the two. I want to give Cram the benefit of the doubt just because I really really like what Spoon is doing for Cramorant right now. It feels really really strong. It really does. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna give Cram A tier. It's because it provides a good amount of CC, good amount of mobility um, with the other build too. And uh, it's Unite Move is good. Spoon absolutely shreds. I think Cram does a lot of damage. He's in a pretty good place right now. I like Cram. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna apologize for it. All right, Decidueye. Decidueye, 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 Decidueye. One of my favorite characters in the entire game, but it's pretty mid. I'm gonna give it B tier. Uh, and it is like the most boomer bust character in this game. If you get a good matchup, Decidueye feels like yesterday. If you get a bad matchup, Decidueye is the worst thing ever. Like if you play well as Decidueye, you can carry as hard as you can carry with any other character in the game. Just deleting squishies with your snipes, securing objectives. The problem is though, if the enemy team knows to look at you, you're useless. So yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's like the biggest boomer bust character in the entire game. It's going to depend on your opponent's team comp and how much their brains work whether or not you'll be able to get a lot done with decky dewey all righty delphox s tier uh it's been s tier it's going to continue to be s tier until they do something about the cooldowns which i really don't think they should do maybe the unite move cooldown i don't think they should you know get rid of the mystical fire recess they nerfed the mystical fire damage and it still feels really strong really powerful so i think they have they're in a good place with that fire spin fire blast i think is a meme build i think fire spin is like it's good it has its moments but you're just a sitting duck i don't think it's a good build but if you guys like fire spin be my guest play it if you want but i you'll never catch me playing fire spin delphox i do think fire blast is very usable the problem with fire blast is you just don't get the resets that you get with mystical fire uh so you're trading off the raw damage output for being able to use the move more and i think both are fine and it's still got a really really good unite move delphox is incredible i think it's one of if not the best junglers in the game and if zacian didn't exist it would still be running the meta but unfortunately the fucking dog exists. Dragapult. I think Dragapult is slightly better than Decidueye. It has a lot of the same problems Decidueye does. Uh, the thing with this uh, Dragapult, though, it just has a little bit more survivability with, you know, just the raw mobility of uh, Dragon Ants or being able to go invisible with Phantom Force. You're just pressing A a lot, and I do think it does that a little bit better than Decidueye. I do think Decidueye is generally a better character. I just think Dragapult is a little bit more matchup fluid in that it can do well against more opponents than Decidueye can. So I'll give it a slight edge in the tier list. Eh, will I though? Mm. Yeah, I'll give it a slight edge. Just just barely. I do think Decidueye is a lot closer to A minus B plus than um you know it is to B, but whatever. I I'm willing to, you know, do the same thing for Decidueye that I did for Gengar and Zorak, despite how good I think Decidueye is personally. Theraladon. 
that's where I really think Duraludon is, but I'm willing to give it B tier because it does provide a lot of value in um, just ripping objectives. I think it's one of the worst plays you could possibly make, uh, just raw flipping an objective because if an enemy team is ready for it, if an enemy team is paying attention to you, then it's a horrible player literally just doing objectives for them. But if you're, you know, if you have a vision of the map and you can see where the enemies are and you can get off a rip, that's valuable. So I'll give it B tier. Uh, Flash Cannon is a meme build. I think Flash Cannon is bad, but it has some of the most defenders in the game. So if, if you enjoy Flash Cannon, play to your heart's content. Just don't do it in my lobbies. Or if you're on the other team, you can do it all you want. Uh, but yeah. Um, yeah. Flipping objectives, good occasionally, but most of the time bad. So easier. Espeon, Espeon, Espeon. Here is my hottest take. Espeon's A tier. It's not S tier. I really don't, I really don't think it is. I really don't think it is. It's incredible. It's very, very good. Espeon is amazing. The problem is, Espeon used to be down here. That's why it feels so much better than it was. I don't think it's up here with these characters. I think it's fine. I think it's in line with a lot of these other Pokemon. I think it's one of the best, you know, laner, lane attackers in the game. I think it's unbelievably good. The problem is, I just don't think it's broken. Uh, I think it's in a good place. I think, you know, just the uh, slight damage buff to the auto attack feels really good. I like the range increase. I like everything about the buff. I just don't think it's S here. That's that's it. I just don't think it's S here. That's literally my take. <laughs> and I know some people might disagree with that. That's fine. I think it's really good. I have no problems with it. I think it's where it should be. In terms of uh, the buff, I don't think it was an over buff. I don't think it was an under buff. I think it was fine. Uh, and next up, we have Gardevoir. Gardevoir, Gardevoir, Gardevoir. I'm going to give it A minus B plus. I think it's maybe the second best attacker jungler in the game right now. The problem is, oh no, it's the third best. Uh, we'll get to the other one in a minute. Uh, the problem is Delphox just gets online a little bit earlier and its abilities are a little bit better. I do think Gardevoir is absolutely phenomenal at just shredding teams. It does so much damage. Just kidding. I lie. It, Gardevoir has to go A tier. It just does too much damage. I think it's uh, bad. I don't think it's bad in lane. I just don't think I, I think it's a phenomenal jungler. I think it's one of the better junglers in the game. Um, and just the raw damage that you do with this character. Give yourself some choice specs, give yourself a spoon, give yourself an energy amp, and just delete people if you catch the meteor roll. It does so, so much damage. Um, the problem is Delphox does that too and has better mobility. That is the only thing wrong with Gardevoir. Um, next up though, Glaceon is right there. It's the other character that is, you know, the um, next best jungler in the game. Icy Wind plus Spoon is disgustingly strong, and I love it. So, yeah, Big Fan of Glaceon, really good Unite move. Again, give yourself an Energy Amp, give yourself a Spoon, and just delete things. Uh, yeah, big fan of Glaceon as well. Although Glaceon survives a little bit better in lane, just because it is a level 4 Evo. But the problem with that is, um, Glaceon kind of, it doesn't necessarily need blue buff, but it feels real freaking good with one. That's, that's what I'm saying. Okay, what do we have next? Greninja, 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 Greninja. Literally everything I said about Dragapult, ditto. Um, it's a really good Pokemon. It has good mobility, good damage, decent Unite move. It's just you're not living a hit from a Dodrio. You're not living a hit from a Water Bear if you get caught. You're get, if you get stunned by one of these guys, you're just dead. You're not one-shotting supports anymore. It's fine. It has its moments, but yeah, it just sort of exist it's cool it's good not bad at all but you know i just think syndrace's auto attacks are better so that's why it gets the uh, edge over the other adcs and next up for attackers we got mew i think mew is still s tier mew is the reason i don't think uh espion is uh s mew is just still just as good as espion has a better boosted unite as um you know solar beam and electro ball i just think mew is i, I just think mew is better mew does the same things espion does but a little bit better. Raw has more, or no, Mew has more raw damage. Espeon has more stun slash utility. But yeah, I, I just think Mew does more for a team. So I'll give Mew S tier. I think it's, I think it's close. I think it's pretty close. Like I don't disagree that Espeon's phenomenal. I just think Mew is better. So Mew S tier, Espeon A. Espeon is like very, very high A, by the way. But like I said, not ranking them within the tier. Uh, Pikachu, hmm. Pikachu is a tough one. Because there, there are times where Pikachu feels incredible, and there are times where Pikachu feels a little bit useless. And based on how I've done the rest of the tier list so far, I think that means it's B tier. I think that means it's Thanos. 
Like it's it's good. It has its matchups. It has its moments where it's great, but it also has its moments where it does nothing. And like I said, that's how I'm grading these other Pokemon. That's how uh, that's how I'll grade Pikachu as well. Oh, I forgot Sableye with supporters. Um, yeah, it's still just as annoying as ever. Um. Mm, Yeah, I'll put it with the others. I'm not saying it's better than Cinderace. I'm just putting it with the supporters. I think it, I think it's somewhere in there. Still annoying. Still has the infinite stuns. So yeah, we'll put them. We'll put them there. Next up, we have Sylveon. Where did I have Sylveon last time? I had it a minus B plus, and I think I agree with that. Still, it is really strong. It's probably one of the tankiest attackers outside of Venu. I gotta go A tier. I gotta go A tier. I do. Uh, for one reason and one reason only. Have you seen a Matarasu play with the Triple EV comp? It absolutely obliterates things. Spoon Hyper Voice. GG. You can also run Spoon on um Draining Kiss and or not Draining Kiss, Mystical Fire, and still do a ton of damage. Like Triple EV is unfortunately a real thing uh in competitive five stacks. I don't think I don't think you should try that in your uh, solo queue games or even your trio queue games. I think that's a horrible idea. But uh yeah, EV or Sylveon. Very tanky, does a lot of damage. I think it's A tier. It's it's probably the worst of the EVs right now, but it's still really, really, really good. And then last up for attackers, we have uh, Venusaur, and Venusaur is also going in A tier. The only thing keeping... Uh, is it A tier? Yeah. Yeah, I think it is, just because it has such a good late game. It's, it's probably the best late game attacker outside of Mew. Just in being able to uh, be in team fights, consistently be able to provide value, um, not get one shot where you know Glaceon, Gardevoir, um, Espeon have that same sort of problem. Delphox Fox even too if it gets caught. Um, Sylveon doesn't really have it, but Venusaur has a great unite move, great sustain. I think it's still an easy A tier Pokemon, so I'll leave it there. All right, let's move on to the defenders. Only a few more Pokemon left. Um, we'll save you for the end because you're the new guy. Blastoise. Guys, I think it's going to be a lot of really high tier to defenders. I'm giving Blastoise S tier. And again, it goes back to Spoon. Um, Blastoise is so, so strong. Special attack specs, energy amp, Spoon. Just threads teams apart. You're not really going to be securing a ton of KOs, but that's what, you know, you have something like a Mew or a Water Bear or a Dark Bear for to follow up with. Like, yeah. Um, Blastoise is seeing a lot of play in double defender comps. So you'll see something like Blastoise Tree or Blastoise Slowbro uh, in a lot of five stack meta. And Blastoise is played as an all arounder slash attacker where it's just completely um, shredding apart teams. You often see Blastoise with the highest damage in a lot of competitive games right now. And uh, yeah, I think it's very warranted in S tier, um, but I don't think it's broken. I just think Spoon is a really, really good item and maybe needs to be a little bit tuned in. But yeah, big fan of where Blastoise is at the moment. Crusty boy. Crustle, mm. man. I don't know where to put you. I don't know where to put you, Crustle. I really don't. Because it's between C and D. Unfortunately. And I don't know how much you can buff Crustle where it's actually going to be viable. I think it's just one of those Pokemon that just has a weird kit that I don't know what you can do to it. Besides just make it absolutely overpowered. So I don't I don't really think it needs too many buffs. I just don't think it's I just don't think it's as good. I think it's more of like an all arounder than a defender, uh, but it doesn't really do much. I don't I don't know, man. I've seen Crustles do so well. It's just it's in a weird spot, man. I really like Crustle. I think it's a fun, really good Pokemon, but I just I, I don't know where to put it. I don't know where to put it. So I'm going to keep it. C. that's where I had it last time. It needs some love, but it's also one of those Pokemon that if you give it too much love, it can be broken. I think a simple fix would just be giving Stealth Rocks its crits back. That could help a lot. Um, maybe giving it a level eight Unite. That could help just giving it its Unite move early because it has a really, really, really good Unite move. That could help a lot, actually. So, you know, something like that would be nice. Just, just some small tweaks. I don't. I, Crustle's a tough one. Crustle's a weird one, man. Because I think it's, I think it's close to being good. It's just so not, if that makes sense. Um, Greedent though. Greedent actually feels kind of B tier right now, but I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt just because it, I, I barely see it. Um, Greedent is still very strong. Um, does a lot of damage, has a lot of mobility, has a lot of survivability. It's just I barely see Greedent these days. I'm not sure why. 
not really sure why I don't see Greedence. I'm happy I don't see Greedence. I hate playing Greedence probably more than any other character in the game. But yeah, I don't know. I just I, I barely see the guy right now. It doesn't feel as impressive as it used to, but still feels really good. So I think Greedence is actually in a pretty healthy place right now, which is coming from me. Not something I thought I would be saying anytime soon. All right, Mammal Swine. I'm going to give Mammal Swine A minus B plus. I had it A tier last time, and the only reason I'm doing that is because I was really wrong about another defender coming up. And I think it's, uh, yeah, I think it's really, really good still. Incredible early. It's incredible all throughout the game. I will say it does fall off a little bit late game in terms of damage, but still provides a lot of value with crowd control and, uh, you know, just freezes. So yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of Mammo. Nothing wrong with it. It's just other defenders are slightly outperforming it right now. One of those being Slowbro, which I think is also S tier. Uh, probably the best pure defender in the game. And uh, when I say that, I mean it's there to take hits, soak up damage, and uh, also put out a lot of damage. A lot of people are like, why do defenders do so much damage? It's because they're always in the fight. Defenders, are defenders and tanks are supposed to do a lot of damage and soak up a lot of damage. The problem becomes when a defender does too much damage that it's um, you know a little bit too good at its job. Uh, Blastoise is kind of in that realm right now. But it's also squishier than a lot of other defenders. It's not squishy by any means, but it's squishier than, you know, this guy uh, and, you know, a couple other things. Well, the, the last three we still have to talk about. So, yeah, uh, I think Slowbro is probably the best pure defender in the game. Has an incredible Unite move. All four of its moves are viable. So, yeah, I think Slowbro is great. Slowbro is an easy S tier for me. Norlax. Norlax, I'm going to give A. Uh, with the caveat that in five stacks, it's... Well, even in five stacks right now, I don't think it's as good as Slurbro or um, Tree. So yeah, I think I think Slurbox is probably the third best defender in coordinated play. But in solo queue, it is still probably the hardest Pokemon to get value out of. Like in solo queue specifically, I'd put Snorlax somewhere down here. But in any sort of coordinated play, I think it's very good, very strong. Still has a great United move, has some great utility, sets up a lot of plays. You can make a ton of plays for your team with Snorlax. So yeah, we'll put it in the old uh a tier for now and then next up we got tree boy is tree stupidly good um as someone who's been a fan of tree since day one um when tree released it was probably one of the most underwhelming it was probably the most underwhelming release of all time at that time uh because we've been so used to things releasing overpowered and then tree came out and it was you know not overpowered it was the first release that was that didn't feel broken and people were calling it terrible and i really never thought tree was terrible and I still never have thought Tree was terrible. Um, and then, you know, it slowly started getting better. Slowly started getting buffs every patch. And now here we are where they have completely um, done a 180 on Tree. And it feels a little bit too good at the moment. I love that Trevenant is great. I love that Trevenant is having this much success because it's probably my favorite defender to play um in the entire game i love playing it it's so 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 fun the thing is the <laughs> wood hammer is ridiculous i thought even after the wood hammer buffs initially people were still going to be playing curse because curse is still really really good they haven't changed curse at all it's still a phenomenal move you still get the reset on horn leech the problem is wood hammer stuns twice and it's an aoe stun and it does a shit ton of damage it's insane i love it I love it, but it's a little bit too strong. I think the only things that really need to be changed about it, though, and I don't let me preface this part by saying I don't want them to nerf tree. I don't want them to remove it completely. I don't want them to just revert the changes because I love that it's in a good spot. I've already made that pretty clear, I think. But I do think that it just slightly overtuned uh, Woodhammer. So I think the um, hitbox on the front, like the first like clap together, Definitely needs to be reduced. The hitbox on that is absolutely insane. And then the activation time on the actual hammer part could also, you know, they could should tweak that a little bit so you're not slamming as fast because there's really there's really no counterplay to it. So just, you know, tune in the hitbox. I really I think is all they need to do because it does make sense that you're, you know, slamming right after. Um So yeah, just 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 nerf the hitbox a little bit, and I think you know tree will be fine. Uh in terms of pain split, uh it's good. You know, they've they buffed the hell out of that too. I think it's better against, you know, I, I, I actually think it's pretty good against the dog. Like, you, you know, you make the dog do damage to itself. It's very good against dog if it doesn't have a Comfy. It doesn't really do anything against the Comfy, so you're probably just better off playing uh, Horn Leech against uh, Zacian Comfy. But I do think if you're playing against just a Zacian without a Comfy, you, like, Pain Split's pretty good against it. 
I do think Pain Split is just pretty good overall. I'm, I'm a really big fan of Pain Split, but yeah. Last but certainly not least, the new kid on the block, we got ourselves Gudra. Now, Gudra is a rare release in Pokemon Unite that feels playable, feels usable, but doesn't feel overpowered in any way. And in some ways, feels a little bit underwhelming. I don't think Gudra is underwhelming at all. I think Gudra is in a pretty good place. I think its Unite move honestly feels a little bit weak. I think it could honestly use, I don't want to say more healing, but maybe, maybe like a little bit of it. Maybe it's hard because you could overbuff the hell out of this Unite move. I think, I think that's the most underwhelming part of its kit aside from Acid Spray. I think Acid Spray is straight up bad, but I have seen some people get some use out of it. I've, uh, so it's not the worst thing in the world. I just, I don't like the dash. Um, what a, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna drop it up here while we're talking about it. Cause I don't want to you know, keep moving it back and forth. Um, what else about Gudra? The thing with its passive. So let's talk about its passive real quick. As I realized we, you know, we're starting to get a little bit long here. I, I think this passive, I don't think it's a, it's really, really strong. It's very good. I like its passive a lot. I don't think it should activate when you're at full health. That would be an incredible quality of life buff to a Gudra. If you're at full health, your passive should not activate if you're in a bush. That'd be amazing. That's really the only thing I have bad. This, those are the only things I have to say that are bad about it. I think it's good. But I do think there are uh, better defenders. Uh, I think, it's, I think it's pretty on par with Mamoswine. Obviously, different roles. Slowbro, or Gudra's more in that Slowbro, Trevenant mold of just not dying, sustaining in a team fight, where uh, Snorlax feels a little, or Mamoswine and Snorlax feel a little bit similar. Blastoise is more of a damage dealer. I think Gudra's more in the, uh, like I said, Slowbro tree role, and those two Pokemon are in S tier, and Gudra's not on their level. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead, put Gudra in the A-B plus range. I think it's a really solid Pokemon, but just doesn't do... It's just not doing as well as some other defenders at the moment. That's fine. That's fine. It's still very playable. You can still do well with it. You can still have a ton of fun with it. And yeah, still like the gooey boy quite a bit. So that being said, here's my tier list. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know which character you think I'm the most off on. If you think I nailed it, I don't know. just give me your thoughts, comments, companions, opinions, opinions down yonder, and I will catch you all in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. Take it easy. Bye. There's the end button. All right, we out.